Okay, so we're finally on to topic of linear maps, okay? So before I start, I want to talk guys like some discussion. So mapping gives relation between mathematical objects. Okay, so for VW vector space over the same field, first, as a vector space, they admit two op binary operations, which is the vector addition and scalar multiplication, right? also for W. We want mappings such that that respects these operations. So this leads to a special class of mapping called linear maps. So VW vector space is linear if for any kappa, for any x, y, and v, we have this uh, property. Okay, so notice that this is in w, okay? So it respects uh, the binary operation. And we define this set to be the set of all linear maps from V to W, okay? So we're gonna use this notation a lot. It's the set of all linear maps from V to W. And here's a note. So if T is linear, then Tx plus Y is equal to Tx plus Ty, and T kappa X is equal to kappa Tx. And <clears throat> so most textbooks, like all, some textbooks also define these two properties as a linear map, but it turns out that they're equivalent. So as we shall see tx plus y is 1x plus y, which is tx plus ty, okay? And we know that t0v maps to t0w, right? Then t kappa x is t kappa x plus 0v, which is kappa tx plus t0v. Well, this thing becomes 0w, right? 0w, which is kappa tx. And so linear gives these two properties. And the converse, I mean, the converse is also like true. Right? You can verify it on your own. So here's some examples of a linear map. So V be the function space, W be the real numbers. So T from V to W define F to be integral of F from zero to one. Then T is linear because of the, the property of the integral, right? Also here we're talking about Riemann integral, okay? And for V be the set of all polynomial, we define T from V to V to be, that takes F to the derivative of X. I mean, the derivative of f, then t is also a linear map. And for w being a subset of v, we define i to be a w to v, such that it is identity map on w. This is called an inclusion map. So the inclusion map is the same as the identity map if and only if w is equal to v. So here are some theorems. So v w vector space over f, we have two, vec uh, two linear maps. Then we define their addition to be tx plus fx and the scalar multiplication to be this, okay? Then we have that it is a vector space over the field F. And the, the proof is, is already proven in the tutorial for first tutorial, okay? And also this one's also proven in the first tutorial. So we define a kernel and a range, right? The kernel is a subset of V, range is a subset of W. It's also proven in the tutorial, first tutorial. And VW is a vector space over F, we let T, be a linear map. Now we define S to be a spanning set for V. Then we have the range of T is the span of T X alpha, okay, for F and J. So we're given a spanning set, spanning set, spanning set. Then the range of T is the spanning, is the span of all, all those um, elements. And the proof is really straightforward. We just prove that the sets are equal to each other. So for x is in the range, then you're gonna some tv. Well, v is in the v. So you have some linear combination, right? Because it spans v, right? So f i from s. But we know that span s is equal to v, right? I mean, gives, gives this, right? Now tv, we just substitute in and we use a linear property. Well, this thing, right, is in the span of t x alpha, okay? And for this direction, with a y being in the span of this, then you have this. So as you can see, we can just use the linearity, right? So this thing is the span of s, which is v. Okay, so y is equal to some t x, where x is in v, okay? Okay, we'll give more definitions. So v, w over uh, the field f, let T be the set of all uh, set of I mean in the set of all linear maps. 
the nullity is the dimension of the kernel and the rank is the dimension of the range. Well, we already know that the kernel is a subspace of E, so the range is subspace of W. So we can also define their dimension because they're vector spaces, right? They're itself vector spaces. Now, so here comes an example. We have V to be the set of all sequence, all, all bounded sequences, all right? So V is the set of all bounded sequences. We define S from V to V such that it takes a sequence and it shifts it forward. So you give it a zero, okay? So, so first we see that X, S is linear. All right, so the verify is, verification is quite simple and kernel is equal to zero because if, if you map to zero, then you have to zero, which means that X is zero for all N, which means that the sequence is zero sequence. So the null S is equal to zero, right? Because the kernel is the zero, zero set. And the rank is infinity, right? Because suppose that if the rank is finite, then first we define x1 to xm, they're linearly independent, right? We have, we have m linearly independent set. But if you're independent and you have length m, you're supposed to be a basis, which means that you should be able to span the range of s. But this is not in a span, so this is not a basis, right? But we but we let rank s to be to m. You see? It's a contradiction here. As a basis, you have length m, dimension is m. As a basis, you should be able to span the space, but you're not spanning the space, okay? More example, so define to be a no potent Jordan cell. So as usual, you just shift it up by one and fill up the zero at the bottom. The kernel is the span of the first coordinate, right? So the null is nullity is equal to one, and the rank is equal to m minus one because. So here we have a dimension theorem. So v and w is a vector space over f. We let t be the linear map, and we also have v as finite dimensional. Then we have the null plus rank is the dimension of v. So here's called the dimension theorem. So how do you prove it? So first, as a subspace, we can admit a basis because they're finite dimensions, so we have a finite basis. And we extend this to the basis of v. Okay, so dimension of v is equal to what? n plus m, right? So if we show that the rank of t is equal to m, then we're done because this has dimension m, n, n plus m, right? So if we show that this is m, then we're done. So first we just consider uh, this set, right? So we, okay, so this set we call it B. Now for V, we can write as a linear combination of those, but after we apply T, those term vanishes because they're in a kernel. They live in a kernel, right? Which means that the range of T is in span of B, right? The range of T is in span of B. Because for any TV, any elements in the range of T, you are in the span of B, right? And so, so B spans the range. Now we finish by showing that B is linearly independent. So we then we show that B is a basis for the range and you have exactly M elements. Well, this is easy because if we have this equal to zero, then this equal to zero. This means that this is in a kernel, which means that you can have a combination of this. But the WIs and the KJs, they're basis of V. So if you just, if you just move it there, they add up zero, they're linearly independent, which means that all the alpha I and BJs do is zero, which means that all the alpha I's is equal to zero. <coughs> right, so this proves the dimension theorem. I have more propositions, so very vector space over f. T is injective if only if the kernel is the zero vector. So for this direction is trivial because this is true because only zero maps to zero. And provided that your zero maps we know we know that zero maps to zero. Right? We already know this. But for this direction, we use the fact that t is injective. Right? If your different input, your output 
if you have different input, your applet should also always be different. And for this direction, you know, t is equal to zero. So if you have tx equal to ty, you have linearity, which means that this, because the current is only zero, which means x equal to y. So this implies this, so t is injective by definition. So here we have one more theorem. So we have vector space over common field. If they have same dimension and they're also finite dimension, then the following are equivalent for any linear map. So injective is equivalent to surjective is equivalent to the fact that rank t is equal to dimension v. Okay, so if you're injective, then you're surjective. Like this is not true in general for all mappings, but it's true for linear map, provided that you're same dimension and you're a finite dimension. So we just prove it by show that a and c are equivalent and b and c are equivalent. Then we're done. So rank t, if rank t is equal to dimension v, if you have c, then the normal t is equal to zero by dimension theorem. This means that the kernel t is the zero space, right? This means that t is injective, right? Also, uh, also if t is injective, we know that the kernel is equal to zero. And if the kernel is zero, then the dimension is zero, right? Then the dimension is zero. Well, if the dimension is zero, then by dimension theorem, we have this. So they're equivalent. For b equivalent to c, so t is surjective, means that the range t is equal to w. Well, this means that the rank of t is equal to the dimension of w, right? Because the dimension of this is equal to the dimension of this, and they're the same, right? And dimension w is equal to dimension v, right? So rank t is equal to dimension v. So b implies c. For this direction, if rank of t is equal to the dimension of v, then range of t is equal to w. So why? So here's a little green arrow I highlighted because if rank of t is equal to the dimension of w, well, we know that the range of t is a subspace of w, right? Then we have range of t is equal to w, right? This is discussed in the basis and dimensions. So if you're a subspace, then your dimension should be less than equal to the original space. But if your dimension happy to be equal, then you guys are the same. So we have this. And range t is equal to w is just the def by definition t implies that t is surjective. And some examples. So if dimension v and dimension w is infinite, so as as before, we define the set of all bounded sequences, right? Well, here the kernel is the zero sequence, right? But s is not surjective, right? Because you you can't map to one, two, three, four. I mean, oh, sorry, you can't map to one, one over two, one over three, one over four. Because this is always easy zero. The image is all always the first coordinate is zero. So any sequence like one, one or two, like this this element is in space, but it cannot be mapped by S. It is not surjective. Okay. Well what if the dimensions are different? Then T if defined by this, well this is surjective, right? But the kernel is not equal to this. We have any we have other things, right? If x one negative one one right this gives you zero zero, but the kernel is not just zero zero zero. Okay, so we have one last um, theorem. So v w vector space we define b to be the basis for v, and so arbitrary set a basis, and for any w alpha. So we also associate a collection of vectors in w. Uh, with respect to every index, then there exists a unique linear map such that the maps the basis to the uh, element we want for any of and j. So the learn there exists a unique linear map such that it has the desired output. Okay, so this is already proven in second tutorial, but I mean, just uh, is not that trivial not quite trivial, so I just repeat the proof real quick. So T and V, so first we have this, right? Because your B is a basis. 
now we define T V to W as T V gives T of kappa I of W alpha I. Okay. So this is my definition. So first we have to show that it is a function. It is well defined. So if V is equal to W, we want to show that T V is equal to W. Okay, so this is by you are a function, right? If V is this, W is this, now we know that there it, it is a basis. So they're independent. If you're independent, then these two expressions are the same because the expression is unique because they're linear independent, which means that V is equal to W and they are equal to all they're all equal to the they're equal to this same expression because they're independent. Right? Well then you have, and then you apply T to the vector, you see that oh they're the same. So it's well defined. So it's actually depending on the fact that uh, they are independent. Now we show that t is linear. Okay, so the proof is quite wrong. Uh, I mean, quite long. So v one v two as a linear combination. Kappa v one, right? We just bring this in, right? Kappa v one, and we after our function, we change all the b's to the w's. And we factor all the kappa, and this thing is TV1. Okay. And TV1 plus V2, so this is also, I mean, you just take your sum, and after apply T, you see that, oh, they're the same. Okay, so there might be duplicate between those alpha i's and those, I mean, these. Okay, so those as a group, and those as a group, there might be duplicates between them, right? So, and this sum, we just group them. And then we apply t to it, and we distribute them to it, achieve this expression. And after this, we see now tv1, tv2. Right? And t has a desired output, is the easiest thing in the proof. It's easy to check that, right? It's just by our definition, right? It's just by our, just by our definition. Right, it's easy to check. And we also want to show that T is unique. So if S is another layer map has the same property, then for any V, right, S V is equal to this, which is this, right? Because S has the desired property. Because S S has the what desired output, right? S B I S B one is equal to S B alpha one is equal to W alpha one. But those are the same as those, those, right? And this is really just equal to TV by definition, right? Because we just, you use the linearity of this thing, and this thing is equal to V. Okay, so we're done. So here's an example to see the importance of this theorem. So, so first we have the basis. This uh, is the basis of all complex polynomial over field C. By above theorem, there exists a unique linear map such that it takes one to zero and takes all the x n's to n x n minus one. Because the differential operator has the property, so it is unique, which means that t must be equal to d. Okay, so just some little application of this theorem. And this concludes um, this lecture. Alright, see you guys.